Spanish, truly simple and truly wonderful. It's called pan tomate, and it's simply that. It's tomatoes and toast. Uh, here in the Northeast of New York City, we have access to wonderful tomatoes. Uh, my home state, New Jersey, has uh, brilliant tomatoes. Here's a small example of some of the tomatoes that are available at this time of year in this part of the country. Uh, all you want to do is when you're looking for tomatoes, your tomato bread, is just find the best tomato you can. Uh, you go by smell and texture. Uh, the classic pan tomato is done with a bright red plum tomato, which are popular in Spain, they're grown in Spain. Uh, today this is the ripest tomato I have, so it looks like we're going to make one with a, a yellowish green tree. It might look a little bizarre, but you know what? Mother Nature rules. The thing is very simple to make. Cut your tomato, get your everyday box grater, and just the tomato. Cut the tomato in half, put the skin side in the palm of your hand, and then rub the exposed part right over the grater. And it's a really great way to use the tomato because you can still maintain some pulp, which gives it nice texture and a really nice mouthfeel, while uh, processing the tomato in a nice paste, which I'll show you here. And once you do, once you have this great tomato pulp, what you do, you can take nice foods like thyme. Uh, some great bay leaf that you just want to tear right quick to go ahead and aromatize it. One of my favorite basils, this is called opal basil. And what we do here at the Fonda del Sol is we kind of make our, uh, our grated tomato pulp. Then we let these herbs steep in it for a little bit, along with one piece of smashed garlic. And what this does, it just sort of gently perfumes the tomato oil. We only let it sit in for about 45 minutes or so, just to get a light perfume. It is, after all, pan tomato. Uh, and you want to highlight the tomato. So while we let this steep, I'm going to show you the deal with the bread. Let me show you the bread up close that we use. This is sort of a, a rustic Italian style loaf. Uh, it's got some nice aeration. It's kind of fluffy, and we really like the crust on the outside. It's got a little bit of a darker crust, which gives a little bitterness, which I personally like when you're pairing it with a sweet tomato. It gives you a little bit of crust. You got sweet and tart and then bitter, and I'll show you where we get the salt and the fat later. So it's really simple. We slice this almost an inch thick. I take a cooking olive, swing it right over. I can't forget my scratch. Swing it right over to our plug. Coincidentally, I know uh, if anybody wants to try this at home, nobody has a plancha like this in, my, in their house. I know I certainly do. So you can swing it to like your local big box store. Grab one of these grill plates, flip it over, and they all have a griddle, which is essentially a plancha. So you can uh, you can do that relatively easily, inexpensively. These things are really cheap. I bought one for my house at, uh, at the kitchen at William and Sonoma, and uh, it was dirt cheap. It was like $49. I use it all the time. I pull it outside to the grill. I use it on my grill. So you just kind of drop some olive oil on here. You could do this in a toaster. You could do it in a broiler. I like doing it on the olive oil. Give it a nice, nice almost charring to the bread. And with the olive oil, it really gives it a nice flavor. You want to push it down a little because the bread is all a bunch of different textures. Got a bunch of crevices and gullies that you want to make sure get toasted. Definitely use a spatula because when you press this, the oil underneath it is hot and it comes through the toast and uh, you burn the snot right out of your finger. No fun for anyone. You know, it's not so much even the color when you're doing this bread, but it's the perfume. You know, it's like a little toastiness is good, a little bitterness is good, but what you don't want to get is uh, too aggressive. If this guy's a little too aggressively cooked, we'll throw him to the side. Uh, this is uh, 
this is brilliant, this guy here. If it's not done, you know, don't uh, try to do a little more oil down, you press it, you use the back of the spoon. The spoon seems to work good, it fits in beneath the crust there. Oh, this looks great. Alright, so now we have the bread. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is right when the bread is hot. Super, super, super hot. And then you just come over and you take your nice, cool... I'll move this out of the way here. Your nice, cool tomato pulp. Hey, Zach! Bring me your uh, tomato pulp, please. Before you do it, you just want to you know, pop on some of the herbs, release some of the flavor, and then you just spoon it right on. We'll do one, one green one and one red one for you. The red is classic. These, uh, these tomatoes, you know, Mother Nature has gotten She's got to set you in the right direction. I don't care if it's the pan tomat, if you're making a six course meal, or you're just looking for garnish for your pasta or rice. You know, good food starts from one place, and that's Mother Nature. Mother Nature says the ripest tomato you have is a yellow or green one. That's what you should use if you're actually interested in having your food taste good. Uh, Arbequina olive oil. This is amazing olive oil, it's really fruity. And I happen to think it marries very, very well with the tomato flavor. Uh, the oil itself helps carry the flavor of the, uh, the herbs. Uh, so first we put a little oil on here. Don't be shy with the oil. And the oil is, uh, this is really a flavor, a flavor ingredient. It's not to do anything else but just add the flavor of itself. So you want to make sure it's on there. And then you take a nice, Pour sea salt, whatever your favorite one is. It doesn't matter if it comes from France, or if it comes from Brittany in France, or, or in England. This one happens to come from England, or uh, Hawaii, or whatever. It's just a nice coarse salt. So swing over here. And this is the Hamon Patanega, uh, the famous jewel of Spain, black footed ham. Uh, and this is a classic condiment for the hand. So, uh, you go to your uh, come to La Fonda and get this. You can go to your store and get a little serrano ham or uh, prosciutto. Just dial in what I consider to be a totally, totally classic Spanish dish for the summertime. Pan tomate with jamón pata negra here at the Fonda del Sol. Good job.